This is my Neverwinter Control Wizard using the Arcane Tempest in Mod 20 Sharndar. After Neverwinter's Mod 20 Sharndar release. My Neverwinter friends, if you play a Control Wizard, you know they've gone through many changes recently, especially since Mod 16. In this video, I'm going to show you how I've added Arcane Tempest to my spell rotation and how I use it, and this is good for the PC, Xbox, or PlayStation consoles as well. As we begin, make sure to give this a thumbs up, and you can subscribe if you want to see more videos about Neverwinter. In this video, I'll show you some of my Neverwinter's Control Wizards items, explain a little about how I play, and show you how I've used and made a couple minor tweaks with my wizard when using the Arcane Tempest spell since Mod 20 Sharndar's release. This is not a build video, even though I'll show you my build. It's just to show a new or casual player that they can hang in there and enjoy Neverwinter even without having all the best gear that Neverwinter has to offer. Shard of the Endless Avalanche has been replaced by Arcane Tempest. And some of you like Neverwinter's Endless Avalanche, so it's a shame that they didn't simply add another spell that you could use instead of completely removing it. Maybe Cryptic will bring it back, but they probably won't, and you should consider it gone forever. This is the type of thing that Cryptic does that sometimes frustrates and alienates loyal players. I'd like to think that they had a good, well thought out reason for completely removing a spell, but here we are, and enough about that. Felipe Flores and Jamon are a couple of regular viewers to my channel and they've asked about my characters recently and I know the new changes have been challenging for a lot of players lately. Sorry Jamon, I couldn't find your questions about my character in a timely manner so I didn't put it up. My control wizard has followed the Arcanist path and as I go through this especially for new and newer Neverwinter players I want to warn you not to use this build that I have in this video as a model for your own wizard. I want to demonstrate Neverwinter's new mod 20 power, Arcane Tempest, and how I've been using it, and not showing you an Arcanist wizard that you should copy. And in full disclosure, I haven't updated this build other than some minor tweaks like adding an epic chicken that I got for a good price since mod 16. I just didn't feel like reworking everything after mod 16, and I kind of switched to an Arbiter Cleric as my main, but I am thinking about going back to my wizard. I just needed some time off from using him because I was frustrated with all the major changes. Now for my character. I already told you I'm not using best in slot <laughs> or even the most up-to-date gear. For instance, I have the Alabaster weapon set still equipped. And in fact, just to show you, I have the more recent Allegiance Guard set. I just didn't feel like upgrading it. And so I didn't. If you don't know or haven't realized this, Neverwinter's changes to weapon artifact sets are generally incremental. And once in a while you'll get a tremendous boost, but you burn through a ton of refining points and resources every time you upgrade these. So I'll generally hold on to a decent weapon artifact set for a couple mods. And I have been using this character in fact, I use three characters to run through the new mod campaigns when they come out. But really, I just have a mixture of some gear that I equipped along the way. And it works out for me just fine. Instead of going through all the individual pieces, I'll just let you know a little bit about the enchantments that I have. Uh, for instance, I, in my utility slots, I'm running with the XP bonus and an Azure enchantment. And the reason being, in the long run, I get these uh, level ups where I can claim the rewards at the end. And I save those up for a 2x Astral Diamond event, which happens very rarely, but it pays off big when it does. So I like to keep those slotted there. And I have Azure in defense. My armor enchantment is a negation enchantment. It's a rank 13, so that's pretty high, but I've had that for a while. I'm running a Quartermaster's enchantment. I like to farm for things I can refine on an ongoing basis, so I leave that in. A weapon enchantment. I have a rank 12 lightning. Again, I've had that for a while. I have a Radiant rank 12 and an offense here. Another Azure. And in the offense, I have the Heart of Fire enchantment. That was a campaign reward. Again, I have another Azure in Utility. Here I switched over to a Dark Enchantment in Utility and an Anniversary Dark Enchantment in my offense slot. Uh, the Ring of the Brutal Fiend. If you want one of those, you can grab one on the Auction House. I did update that recently, just to let you know. But I have in my offense slots, I have two Brutal Enchantments, Rank 13. 
and I'm still running the Ebonized Restoration Ring with a Dark in Defense and Brutal in Offense. And I have a Dragon Horde Rank 11 in the Utility slot here for farming purposes. In Defense, I have a Dark Enchantment. I have a Radiant Rank 12 in another Azura in Defense. And again, this isn't a maxed out character. In fact, none of my characters are. And down on the belt, I have the Decanter down here. And I'm running with a Soul Sight Crystal, <laughs> a Lantern of Revelation. And my artifact set is the Orcus set. Still using that. Now these, are, of course, are all at Mythic level. But they've been leveled all the way up for quite some time now. My Boons, I'll give you a quick look at that. I'm not going to go into that. Like I said, this isn't a build video. But I do want to give you an idea on where I'm at. In case you're interested. And I know some of you are. I have a critical severity for my guild offense boon. Defense, I have a bonus in my hit points. And utility, I have the revive sickness boon. On to companions. Most recently, I've been running with the abysmal chicken. I got that for a great price. And you can see here, I have some legendary companions, but I don't have anything ranked all the way to mythic because I don't have to. I can still enjoy the game just like you should be without taking everything up to a maximum level. And for a while, augmented companions were all the rage, and I was running with this bullet pup. I switched over to an active companion since Mod 20's release, and it's been doing pretty well for me. My companion enhancement here, I have precision, baby bullet's presence. I do a good bit of solo play, other than, of course, the dungeon runs, and survivability can be a little bit of an issue, so that's why I have some of this equipped, like the baby bullet's presence. But I have pouncer's instincts, Gives me a bonus to increase my critical strike and critical severity. I have the baby deep crow's presence. I've had that for a while. Keep my power up. Hawk's instincts. Gives me a bonus to critical severity and critical chance. And the baby owlbear's presence. Where if I fail to hit critically, I have a 10% chance to do an additional hit for a little extra damage. These are things I really haven't adjusted. Like I said. So th that's just where it is. And I just wanted to show you where it was at. Like I said, I know some of you will want to know, and that's fine. As far as mounts go, I have one mythic mount, I have a legendary mount, and I have three epic mounts. The King of Spines I got from a lockbox drop when it first came out. The Celestial Stag I got during a special sale event for a good price as my legendary mount. That's why I have them. I didn't go looking for specific insignia combinations, which is recommended you do, but uh, I didn't in this case. I almost always leave Wanderer's Fortune on. I get lots of extra refining stones that way. In fact, I have that on all of my alternate characters. I'm using Artifer's Persuasion to help with cooldowns. Cavalry's Warning. And these just happen to be some of the best insignia bonuses I have on these particular mounts. Because I didn't go mount shopping. I just kind of use what has come up for me easily. And you can do it that way too, if you want. I have Champion's Return. I mentioned survivability a little bit when I solo. This helps me out a little bit with that. And I have Warlord's Inspiration to help my summon companion do some damage. I went over those kind of slowly in case you wanted to go back. Uh, you can back up, pause the video if you wanted to see exactly what I had. But again, it's not a build video. So I don't recommend you go out and spend Astral Diamonds buying these particular mounts or getting the insignias for these particular bonuses. I was just equipping what benefits me right now. Uh, with mod 20 without spending i haven't spent any astral diamonds or anything making these adjustments it's just stuff i had back up here real quick for uh, for my companion equipment i'm a choke chain of the companion nothing special i have an empowered runestone and recondite runestone there another empowered and arcane runestone but these are rank 11s not extremely unattainable for new or newer players now then over to powers for the Arcanist build I have, for dealing with the mobs, my spell combination is I have Icy Terrain, I have Lightning Bolt, I'm using Steel Time, and I have that in my Arcane Mastery slot, and then I have the new Arcane Tempest power. <laughs> On my dailies, I have Icy Knife and Oppressive Force. And just so you know, I ran for a little bit with Arcane Tempest in the Mastery slot and then switched it back to Steel Time. I found it's working a little better for me, especially when I solo. You could also throw in the shield if you want, instead of lightning bolt. But I prefer the lightning bolt right now. Give me a little extra damage. It's not quite as slow. And the refresh, I like it. 
My at wills are Icy Ray and Magic Missile. And my class features are Evocation and Arcane Presence. And for the first part of the demonstration, I did use Storm Spell instead of Evocation during the Lair of Lost Mouth. And I also used Storm Pillar instead of Magic Missile. I just wanted to play around with the damage a little bit. And again, my feats haven't been adjusted in some time. But it's what I have selected now. I have Spell Twisting, Assailing Force, Iced Lightning, Nightmare Wizardry, and a step above, Mastery. And if you're new here, I do have lots of other videos with tips about Neverwinter. And I'll put a link at the end of this video for you to click on when you're done watching this one. My build, as I mentioned, isn't spectacular. And again, as my regular viewers know, I don't strive for all the best in slot items. I like to be able to play the game, have fun, do enough to survive, and help my group through on dungeon runs. And I'm happy with that. I like to balance Neverwinter's gameplay with some of the mini games within Neverwinter, like Astral Diamond Acquisition, through buying and selling things on the auction house, doing some of the daily dungeon runs, and farming items I can sell. Gathering currency is fun for me, and I personally find it soothing for some reason. <laughs> and it's something that's very useful as you progress in the game past level 80. I'm a hoarder though, and if you've played this game for a while, you begin to realize that change is constant. And what you spent every Astral Diamond and Refining Point on to level up and to be top DPS, if that's your thing, or the most invincible tank around, it generally only holds true for about a mod, and only after the dust settles from all the inevitable tweaks. Now you know my thoughts behind the gear and equipment my characters use, and I feel it's important that you understand where I'm coming from as a Neverwinter game player. I'm kind of a solid regular player who sometimes gets top DPS, which is fun, but it's not my main goal. And I'm not an elite Neverwinter player. Now I have some samples of Neverwinter's dungeon cues using Arcane Tempest in my spell rotation, and I've settled with the spell group I mentioned above for now. But in my first dungeon sample, I ran... And once more, I'm urging caution if you're a newer casual player, because my build isn't optimized, even for regular play. I wanted to share with you the area of effect spells to show you some damage combinations that I'm finding fun and useful. Of course, you're welcome to do as you wish. I just don't want to unintentionally mislead you. Now we switch over to the Temple of Tiamat. And you can see I'm using Steel Time, the new power Arcane Tempest, and Icy Terrain. They make a nice combination when I'm surrounded by mobs. And they act in concert to slow down their attacks, giving me time to do damage, while helping me and my group survive. You can make a PayPal donation through the link provided down below to support this channel. Now we're switching over to Spell Plague Caverns. And the same thing, we were having a little trouble surviving in this one. Depending on your group, this can be a tough run and slow going. But again, you can see how the spell combination is doing some nice area of effect damage and slowing things down just enough to help us out. You can see again, using my Control Wizards, Oppressive Force, Steel Time, Arcane Tempest, and Icy Terrain, they make a very nice combination to help deal with these mobs. So I'm finding this pretty easy to use. I don't mind it died there again. And even though I don't go for top DPS, that's not my main goal, I did well in this video, or for this video, when I was making this demonstrated for you. And make sure you check out my playlist for more helpful Neverwinter videos. Thanks for watching. And now you have a look at how I like to use the new spell, Arcane Tempest. At least for now, with my Neverwinter Control Wizard in Mod 20.